Tonight, I'm gonna to show you how to find the best lumber at Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever your big box store is. When you go shopping at Home Depot or Lowe's to try to find good lumber for your furniture projects, it can be a bit of a challenge. We've all found those two by fours that are warped so badly that you can't imagine how it could be stacked with another piece of wood on a pallet. Unfortunately, when you get the construction grade lumber at your big box stores, you're gonna find a fair amount of these boards. But there are some secrets and tricks that I wanna share with you how to find the best construction grade lumber for your furniture projects. When you walk up to a stack of two by fours or two by sixes, the first thing you need to figure out is how dry they are. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can use a moisture meter to get an exact number or you can get an approximate number with a couple of tricks. A simple way to figure out the moisture content approximately on a board is to feel it with your hand. Your hand has a very good sense of temperature. What you can do is put your hand on the side of a stack of lumber and move it up and down the stack. You wanna feel for anything that feels cold to the touch, and that would be colder than room temperature. Your hands are used to room temperature, so when you touch that board, if that feels cold, that means there's more moisture in it. If the board feels the same temperature as the room, that means it's fairly dry. I've gone in before and put my hand at the top of the stack of lumber and felt how cold it is, and then as I move my hand towards the bottom of the stack, you can feel the temperature slowly change to be room temperature at the bottom. If you wanna get an exact number, you can use a moisture meter, measure the moisture content of a board in your shop that's been there for a long time, then compare it to one that you just got recently that you're ready to start working with. If they're similar, then you should be good to go. In my shop, my lumber acclimatizes at about 10% moisture content. If you measure a board at Home Depot or Lowe's that's at 20% or 30%, it's probably gonna move or twist somewhat after you bring it home to your shop. The first thing you're gonna look for as you pull the board off the rack is any nicks or big knots or big chunks taken out of it. Avoid those altogether if you can. It just makes things a lot easier if you don't have to worry about that. You know what your design is, and if it's something that you can either hide in the back of the piece or you can cut off, then no problem. But if you're gonna be seeing those edges, you wanna make sure that they're as clean as possible. Once you've checked for imperfections and knots, the next thing you need to look for is the straightness of the board. Now this can be done very easily by just picking up whatever board you're looking to buy and sighting down the length of it. When I look at this board, I can see that it's straight going this way, but when I turn it like this, there's a little bit of a twist to it. So you can see it's here and it's twisting just a little bit, which means I need to make sure that that's not gonna affect my furniture construction. I built some furniture out of two by fours and two by sixes that can adapt to that sort of twist and they can be fine with it. And I built others where that was a major problem. So make sure you know what your design can handle in terms of a little bit of twist or warp in the board. I would also avoid the outside edges. That's typically where the boards get more abuse and they also get more exposed to weather. Then look at the end grain on it. Ideally, you don't wanna be working with a board that has the center of the tree down the center of the lumber. So when you see a grain pattern that looks like this, that's probably a two by four you want to avoid. Those typically have a tendency to split more over time and that's just because of the nature of how the tree dries. The center of the tree, which is called the pith, is actually not very structurally strong either. You're gonna find some boards that are flats on, like this, that have the U-shaped grain in it, and if you're lucky, you'll find some that are quarter sawn, which is where your grain is going vertical like this across the length of your two x four. These are rare, but if you find them and they're straight, get them. Now, if you're looking at the end grain of the two x fours and the two x sixes, and they all look pretty bad, or they all have the center of the tree going down the middle of the board, then step over to the two x 10 or the two x 12 rack. A bigger board has to come from a bigger tree, which typically means that you're gonna have less knots and less branches coming into it. Once you get your 2x12 or 2x10, take it home, rip it into whatever width 2x4s you want. If you want to get it exactly 4 inches wide, you can do that. Now let's say you're used to getting 8 foot long 2x4s and you go to the 2x4 rack and everything there has been picked through and it's all twisted and warped and nasty. Usually there'll be another stack that's not 96 inches, but that's 92 and 5 8 If you don't need a full 96 inch board or you're okay having a couple inches less, that can be a whole nother stack of lumber you can go through. I've done a fair amount of kids' furniture for my kids' bedrooms and I found that if I take a good two by four that's dry, that has good grain pattern on it, and I plane the top and the bottom, and then I rip it down to just slightly under, reroute the corners, I can get a very nicely finished two by four. It looks like a two by four, but I can sand it smooth and nobody's getting splinters. If you're looking at one by fours, remember there's a couple different grades. There's usually the select pine, which doesn't have any knots in it. 
and then there's one tier below that, which is just the normal 1x4s. That'll have knots, but you can find usually some pretty good stuff in that. The same rules apply to these boards. Look for straightness, look for warp, look for big knots that might be in the way, and make sure to check the end grain so that you don't have the center of the tree going down the center of your board. Now, of course, Home Depot and Lowe's typically also have a hardwood section. Often they'll have maple, sometimes walnut, maybe alder, because they're S4S, which means they're surfaced on four sides. They are gonna be more expensive than what you'd get at a lumber yard. However, I have flipped through those stacks occasionally and I found some great hidden treasures in there. Curly maple or figured walnut, that I can get at the price of just the standard lumber. If you find those, buy them fast because they won't be there long. I would not typically go to Home Depot or Lowe's to get hardwood just because the prices are so high. But if you need a board fast and you can't get to the lumber yard for whatever reason, it can be a good resource. It's totally possible to build furniture out of construction grade lumber from any big box store. Since this is all softwood, it will get dents and scratches and stuff, but if you're okay with that, it can be very structurally sound. You just gotta have the patience to search for it. I'm sure the guys at Home Depot hate it when I dig through the stack and shuffle it all around, but hey, if they had better lumber, I wouldn't have to do that. I always make sure I have plenty of time to pick through the lumber and make sure I get the ones that I want. I hope this helped you have an idea of how to find the best lumber at the big box stores. Let me know what other tricks you have to find the good lumber in the stores you're going to. Maybe we can get them to stock better quality lumber if we don't buy any of the bad stuff. I always try to get my money's worth when I buy lumber, and you should too. If you're trying to learn more about woodworking, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get some sweet merch, check out the links below. Now, go build something, and we'll see you next time.